So almost exactly one year and one month ago, I got my first aquatic amphibian. Actually my first exotic amphibian, because uh, before then I had just been keeping native species to the area. And so this is my axolotl uh, that you might have seen some videos on. I think I've done two on her. I did one unboxing where I was super nervous because this is a very intimidating animal for me to get. Not because they're a scary species or because they're super complicated, but because this was completely new territory for me and something I had never cared for. I'm all about the terrestrial reptiles and this was a whole new ballpark. So I was excited, but I was super nervous, I think understandably. Uh, so I got her from Amber at Amber's Axolotls on Instagram. Uh, she's not currently selling, but I think she's going to later this year. So just don't spam her with messages asking if she's selling. <laughs> But she shipped Wooby Woo, which is the name of my axolotl, because Wooby, Wooby Woo, from the town of Wooby Woos. People either love or hate the name, and I adore it. Um, Wooby Woo was shipped from Illinois to North Carolina in March, and I got her as this really young, very different looking axolotl. A, a lot of people are probably gonna think I did a little swishity switch out if she like died or something, but if I had faked it and switched to a new one, I would have matched them up a little bit better. <laughs> so they just change a lot with color, which I didn't realize how much they would do, but thankfully I really like how the adult version of her looks. She started as this kind of lightly colored with a little bit of pinkish, and she was super tiny. I think I have the baby picture where she was like straight out of the egg. Um, I got her when she was like a few inches long, because you, I guess you want to wait to make sure they're healthy and large enough to ship. And then she was shipped to me, and she has grown a ton over the year. I'm pretty sure she's done growing now. She's been the same size for a number of months. Uh, so she grew pretty fast to full size, maybe in like, eight months or so. Uh, but yeah, so I unboxed her in March. That was actually my first time unboxing an animal too. <laughs> We've shipped out like a hundred, I think over a hundred animals now, but I've only had one actually delivered to me. Um, so that was exciting. I got to unbox and everything. And there were a lot of things that happened throughout keeping this animal that were just complicated and kind of stressful. So you might think that the most difficult animal for me to keep has been my Savannah monitor, but she is second to last on the list because Wooby Woo gets first on the list. This has been the most difficult experience and the most tiring. I don't regret getting her, I'm still really glad, and I wouldn't mind a couple more maybe in the future, who knows? So axolotls, if you don't know, they're basically a salamander tadpole that never actually transforms into a salamander. Uh, they're from somewhere in Mexico. I think they're actually extinct in the wild. I don't know anything about their origin or their history or their natural life. I just know how to keep mine alive. This is also not a care guide, because I'm not taking my ability for that. <laughs> there are quite a few changes that you might even be able to tell just from looking at the enclosure. The first is that there is no sand, because the first problem I ran into was ammonia. I got one of those kits, one of the water testing kits. You can also just buy like strips, but I thought I'd be fancy, buy the whole little tubes and bottles and everything. I don't know why people say I'm not a licensed scientist, because I, I have a water kit. What else do you need? And so it was pretty decent at the start, like not too bad, the levels were a little bit off, but uh, they just kept worsening. I was kind of hoping that as it kind of cycled more that it would get better, which cycling is kind of a big part of my original issue here, is I did about a month's prep for this animal, like reading care guides and stuff, um, which to a lot of people is like barely anything to others that's like way more than you need to do. Uh, I felt comfortable with the amount that I looked into, but I probably could have used a little bit more because I didn't entirely understand just how long cycling an enclosure would be. Uh, so when I got Wibu into the enclosure, the levels looked perfect since she hadn't started producing any waste or anything, uh, but it probably wasn't fully cycled properly. I was using this really lame filter that actually broke within like a couple weeks. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. I've used a couple more of them and I hate them. I don't recommend them. They suck. I got it on Amazon. Just don't. I have a kit below with all the supplies that I used and the updated filter, which is another change I made that I'll get to, um, but yeah, basically the filter wasn't really working and it ended up just breaking out of nowhere. The enclosure was like partially cycled and Wibby Woo started producing waste. Uh, I was feeding her just as usual, cutting up little night crawlers and she was loving them, but she was pooping quite a bit. Uh, I didn't have a, this, what's it called? I didn't have a siphon like the very first day. I ordered it like the day I got her. So I, I was siphonless for a couple days. So I was kind of just scooping it out. Luckily the poop stays in these little packets as long as you don't break them open. Uh, I guess like most amphibian poop, like the toads, it's really easy to just clean it because it's like a little poop sausage. But if you break it, it's like a poop pinata. It's everywhere. Uh, so that would occasionally happen and that just made the ammonia worse. So there's this video that really helped me from Aquarium Co-op. 
on explaining nitrate, nitrite, and ammonia. And they were actually the people that sent me almost all the supplies for this enclosure, uh, including that really fancy light that unfortunately I dropped in the water because it wasn't attached well enough. Thankfully nothing was electrocuted, but half the light broke. So I'll just count my blessings on that. Who cares, you can still see. They have a really good video explaining the differences so you can understand it and I won't go into that. But I was having the ammonia problem and I was trying all sorts of things and eventually the thing that worked the best was just removing all the sand. So I preferred it with sand. I think it looks worse without. I can live without it. I've learned to like it a bit. Um, and that's really helped because it's been easier to keep it clean and spot cleaning is not as hard because I would literally have to take out chunks of sand and wash it in the sink, which was a pain and it probably kind of ruined the cycle a little bit. I, I just took the sand out and it's much better. So I had ammonia problems all throughout the year. Still occasionally it will spike. The problem is she poops always under the hide. So if I try to siphon it from the hide, the siphon can't fit under there. If I lift the hide, everything just goes everywhere. Not just poop, but detritus. Detritus is the scariest thing I've ever seen. Uh, I didn't know what these were called originally. It was these little white worms that appear when there is waste, they just kind of come and start eating it and they breed on it and they keep breeding and keep breeding and they just explode in quantity. It's horrifying. I, I literally just got chills just thinking of them. They're not harmful. They can't do anything to the axolotl. They can't do anything to you. They just exist and I hate it. People were just saying like, don't worry, it'll go away as you clean the poop out and as you get everything situated, you don't have to like take them out manually. They'll start disappearing. I just, I couldn't sleep at night knowing there was these but these worms, these parasite looking things in my reptile room. <sighs> so I was just on mission kill detritus and they sucked. So like, who cares about the axolotl being healthy? I just need these detritus to get out. But so basically my point in saying that is occasionally there's still a spike. Uh, it's extra clean right now because I cleaned it literally a few minutes ago before uh, this. I siphoned it and did a pretty decent water change. Right now I usually do about a 50% water change like twice a week, which is kind of a lot. Uh, some people do, I think, like a 10% change per day. Some do like a 25% change per week. I'm, look, I'm on my routine. It's probably not the routine you should be doing, but I'm just basing this on the health of my animal. And thankfully, speaking of the health, I don't think she's ever had any ammonia burns at all. Apparently that's pretty common to deal with. Maybe, maybe I'm overlooking it, but I don't see anything. The only physical damage she's had is she had an old hide in here. It looks super cool. I really liked it, uh, but it ended up, it was cheap and ended up chipping on the inside. So when she came out, it gassed her tail open. Uh, axolotls are known to regenerate basically any part of their body, like their legs. Just pop it off, it'll grow back. Don't pop your axolotl's legs off. But if you do, it'll grow back. So she kind of took a whole chunk out of her tail. Uh, uh, that's a gross visual. Actually, I have pictures, so you get all the gross visuals. It's really not that bad though. It was just this like, thing in there. That happened a number of months ago, sometime last year. You really can't even see it. You have to look for it and you can kind of see the spot it was there, uh, but it healed up super well and super quickly. So I changed out the hide and that's the only physical issue she's had. Now the filter has been another interesting thing. Like I said, I hated that first filter I got. It sucked. I got this other filter that I don't know the name of, but I'll link it also below. Buy it on Amazon. I get commissions when you buy stuff on Amazon. <laughs> and this new filter has been doing quite well. I guess it's a sponge filter. I know they're like, I have a canister filter for my turtle Franklin. And then we have a few of the just like plain boring filters for a couple other turtles. And so she had one of those, but now she has this sponge one and it definitely works better. And it doesn't break after two weeks of use. Yay. Uh, it wasn't cycled though. She's never really had a fully cycled enclosure because the stupid filters kept breaking. And I was like trying to save the filters, like the filter cartridges, but it wasn't really working. And I couldn't use the cartridge in this. So I'm not very good at cycling and I didn't really do it. But thankfully she hasn't seemed to have been impacted at all. And she's grown very well. Uh, no ammonia problems on her physical body, just in the water and no visible stress that I've seen. Now I have the filter off right now because it would drive us insane if you could hear it while I was filming. It does cause a bit of a flow and people were really angry in the first video because they were like, the flow is going to stress it out and stress is going to kill your axolotl. It's true that stress will kill your axolotl, but she does not seem bothered by it. It's pretty easy to tell when an axolotl is stressed, their little head worms will basically curl inwards or curl outward. They'll curl some direction, but hers don't curl either direction and they never have. I think the one time it did was kind of near the start, uh, the start of summer when it was really hot, 
where her enclosure was sometimes reaching 75 degrees. I believe 74 is when heat stress is most common, and ideally you'll be, you'll be in the 60s. Right now it's a crisp 61 in here, uh, in her enclosure, because I have this fan, which is also off, because it's really loud and annoying. I hate it. But it does the job, because originally I had to use frozen water bottles, and I would switch them out twice a day just to keep the water temperatures down. Uh, thankfully, this fan works well, so the only time she ever showed any signs of stress was when the temperatures were way too high. I fixed that, and she's been good ever since. The flow from the filter is not something she's ever had a reaction to. I tried to decrease it, like I had stuffed like paper towel and rags and stuff in it, but it was just making stuff gross and it was getting clogged up. Cause the water level drops really fast because the fan is on it and because the filter's running. So the more space there is between the filter and the water, the more flow there is. And it's hard to keep this topped off because you don't want to just top the enclosure off. I think Aquarium Cup did a video on that too, uh, where, whether it's an aquarium for fish or an axolotl, uh, why topping it off is dangerous. So you don't want to do that, you want to actually do changes. So basically it the level does drop and the flow gets stronger. And I don't mind the flow because Ruby Woo does not mind the flow. Uh, her diet, that's been super easy. She eats a full night crawler about, she eats like four night crawlers a week or something. Uh, like just full size. I used to cut them up, but she just eats the whole thing whole. Um, I stopped cutting them up because they would get kind of bloody and dirty the water up. Uh, I was kind of concerned she would like, sh she can't choke on it, but I don't know, she'd be uncomfortable, but she just scarfs them down, no problem. Three to four night crawlers a week has kept her at this perfect health, even though most things say to like feed her daily. And then as a baby, she was eating like half of a night crawler every other day or so. Uh, so plants is another thing. This enclosure looks pretty, underwhelming overall. There's two plants in it and a hide and an axolotl. Uh, the plants that I have in here now are doing quite well. Uh, they're not in sand. One is literally just floating around. It, it's just one with the enclosure. It just floats back and forth and it does fine. And then this other one that I also got from Aquarium Co-op, uh, it's on a piece of wood uh, so it, it stays in place. And that one's doing really well. That one costed me like $30 so I'm glad it's doing well. And then the hide is covered in algae. This entire enclosure will get covered in algae. I don't believe algae is dangerous in any way for axolotls. Like I know they aren't for turtles. They can just grow on your turtle and you can scrape it off, but I like to leave it because it looks kind of cool. And But the hide is also covered in algae. I used to scrape it all off. Now I just don't care. I got used to the look. I do scrape it off the glass primarily so because it looks good in videos, but also because I don't want to see algae myself all the time because it makes it look very ignored and very lame when there's algae everywhere. There's still some on the corners because I can't get it off the rubber as easily, but that's fine. So algae's growing. I'm sure that's partially because of the lighting on top. Uh, I have had the lighting off before because that's something else people say stresses her out. She's not stressed out by the lighting. I can see where some axolotls might be. Mine has had lighting from the first day and I've turned it off at different points to see how she changes. And at first she would hide less when the light was off but now it's completely indifferent whether the light's on or, or on or off. So it helps the plants, it promotes algae growth, um, it looks cool, she doesn't mind it, I leave the light on. I don't care what you have to say. You might be able to tell, over the past year, I've become a bit more stubborn about the care. Because at first I was like changing everything, like if there was a suggestion, I would jump on it, I'd fix it, I'd do it, but then I was just changing stuff like every day, and nothing was the same because everyone was saying something different. So now that I know what keeps her happy and healthy, I'm pretty firm on the husbandry. Again, this is not a care guide because maybe this does not apply for all axolotls, but for my own, I figured out what keeps her alive and healthy. So I've just got to be a bit more strict on listening to axolotl advice. And I usually have to, I just reach out myself to trusted axolotl keepers instead of relying on the comment section. Wibu herself, I didn't even really talk about her. I just talked about the enclosure. She's such a cool animal. She's so big. I wish you could like do stuff with her, like handle her or something. I don't know, I guess you can't. Like I've put my hand in there and I've like touched her feet. Like they feel so weird. It's, they're such a weird animal and it's really cool. So I'm really glad I have an axolotl. I'm glad that she's doing well. I really like how she looks. Uh, she is just a wild type morph. I think they're still called morphs in axolotls. If I ever got another one, I would love like the white. I think it's, what's it called? Is it just albino? whatever that one is. That's my kind of second favorite, but I love the wild type looking. She looked even cooler on the white sand, but I don't mind her just like this. So everything about her is so unhuman-like. It's like, the, we have very few similarities. We both have eyes and we both have four appendages. 
But other than that, we're, co we're different colors from them. They have those weird alien thingies. They have the odd fish looking tails. They have the weirdest like sideways fish face. I just like having animals that are as far from us as possible. Kind of like how snakes are. Um, it, it makes it more interesting. Uh, but it, it's, it's just crazy that you can own an animal that's this bizarre. And I'm glad that they don't turn into salamanders because salamanders are kind of lame compared to them. <laughs> uh, aquatic is a pain. I was stressed out at first because this was on a different shelf. It's now on this like industrial heavy duty shelf, but it was on kind of the other one and I was like, that's a lot of water. That's like a lot of pounds of water. You cannot move this enclosure a single inch when it's filled. You have to drain it at least like 75% just for two people to move it off the thing. Maybe everyone I know is just really weak, but we can't do it. But a 20 feels like a nice size for her. She moves around quite a bit. She looks dead. She convinces me that she's just deceased five times a day because she just floats like everywhere uh, she like she's not at the top or anything I think floating at the top of the enclosure is also a bad sign but she'll just float anywhere like in the middle she just exists like she's in space so yay my axe model's not dead that's her update what do you think of the species do you want to see me with more aquatic amphibians I don't right now <laughs> like if you do then sorry I don't think I'm gonna get anything else at the moment, other than maybe another axolotl at some point. Uh, I used to want some newts, but that kind of wore off. I, I just want more aquatic turtles, I guess. Turtles are cooler. But that's Wooby Woo, my axolotl. Cared for her for 13 months. She's still alive. Oh yeah. I set really high standards for myself. Don't kill it. Uh, like I said, all the supplies I use is in the description. You can check out the other videos I did on her, and that's her 13 month update. So I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.